What's up, everyone, and welcome back to Rob's Gaming Table. Today on the table, we're doing another Key Forge Archon Vault Tour Top 16 game from Gen Con 2019. On the left, we have Peyton. On the right, we have Jeff. If you'd like to check out their decks, they are linked in the description below over on the Master Vault. And we see Peyton starting off with a disc turn. He is dropping down a Lash of Broken Dreams, saying, I'm going to make you pay more for keys this game, Jeff. And he drops in a Hunting Witch. A Niffle Ape gets an Amber off the Hunting Witch's effect. And not a bad turn, too. Over to Peyton, who drops down a Lab Work. Gains an Amber off that, of course. Gets to archive a card. So the winner of this, obviously, moving on to the top eight. We have two top eight videos coming up next and a top four. All games that were not on Fancy Flight Games live stream. So new new content for you guys here. And we have a Twin Bolt Emission dealing a couple damage. Followed by a Novu Archaeologist with that great effect. The action of basically taking a uh, discarded card and throwing it into your archive. Getting a little recursion going. Can't leave that guy out for too long. Jeff drops down a Bat Drone on his Logos turn here. Wild Wormhole gaining an Amber. Playing the top card. Mermook into play. Raising key cost by one for Peyton. And a Sloppy Lab Work gaining an Amber. Has to discard and archive a card. In the opposite order I just said. <laughs> All right, an Earthshaker for the discard. Doesn't want to play it because it would destroy his own board. That makes sense. Discard that guy for sure. Sounds like Peyton's going Shadows here. And a Poison Wave. Two damage across the board to all creatures. Getting rid of Niffle Ape and Bat Drone. And should have another damage there on Mermook unless I miss something. I don't think he had any armor from any neighbors or anything, but I could be wrong. All right, next is coming to play on the right flank. Macus Asp on the left flank. And a Snecklifter stealing no artifacts. So both players at three amber, no keys. And we got a Bumpsy coming down, though, knocking out amber off of Peyton's identity card there. And a Sound the Horns getting an Amber himself. Gets to discard cards off the top of his deck till he finds a Brobnar creature and adds it to his hand. A lot of Logos cards there. There's a Troll. Gets a Troll to hand. I'm sure he'll play that Troll. There he is. And another Sound the Horns. Juicy. Looking at the deck list here. Jeff has three Wild Wormholes in his deck. That is nuts. Or is it Peyton? Do I have them flip backwards? Uh, no. No, I'm right. Yeah. Three wild wormholes in Jeff's deck. And no wild wormholes in Peyton's deck. Yep. Yeah. All right. So we see a, who is that? A headhunter on the right flank there. Able to fight and earn an amber for Jeff if he uses them in the future. So we got a disc turn off Peyton here. Lash of Broken Dreams. Raising the key cost by three for Jeff next turn. And a dance of doom. He's going to choose five cross creatures. So they all get destroyed. And that hits two of the Brobnar creatures on the flanks there for Jeff. Leaving him a troll and the Mermook on the board. So Peyton's saying he had a misplay there. Should have had Tolis out first, obviously. But uh, he's not going to ask for a take back. He just <laughs> realized he did it. And Creeping Oblivion, he's going to be able to purge, uh, what is it, two cards? Yeah, two cards from the discard pile. Gets an Amber off that. And he's going to look through Jeff's discard pile here, which he's seeded a little bit more using the Sound the Horns. See a library access in there. Go do some creatures. So he's going to get rid of a Hunting Witch, which I think is a good call. There are two regrowths in Jeff's deck. And there is a key charge. So Peyton's got to make that key charge play weaker. That's what I think he's trying to do here. And he gets rid of a Library Access. Library Access getting purged without being played. Feels bad. You see Jeff there already looking through his discard pile. Does he have a regrowth in hand already? Or has he got some wild wormholes? He's not sure what he's going to play. 
Kind of seeing what's left in his deck. He knows his deck, I'm sure. So looking through your discard pile kind of gives you knowledge of what you may see coming up. So we have Brain Eater down on the left flank, followed by Quixo the Adventurer. And there's the Wild Wormhole. Yep, I was right. And we got a Bumpsy coming into play, forcing Peyton to lose an Amber. So Jeff is in check for his first key. Assuming we don't have a lash play here or something else to steal Amber or raise key cost for Jeff. If you're interested in more Keyforge videos like this, I have lots on the channel. They're in playlists. Just head on over to Rob's Gaming Table on YouTube. Hit the playlist section. You can go see the Sealed Tournament from Gen Con. Sealed Vault Tour from Origins. Uh, some other random Keyforge videos in there. But yeah, lots of Keyforge coverage. More coming up on the channel, so make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of the future videos. Also planning to do some streaming of some live Keyforge playing physical and digital uh, using the uh, Crucible app, uh, web app there, uh, over on twitch.tv forward slash Rob's Gaming Table. The link for that is in the description below also. If you'd like to donate, any little bit helps get me to more tournaments, get more videos like this, helps improve the channel. You can do so. There's a Patreon link in the description below. Thanks to everyone that donates on Patreon. You guys are awesome. All right, so we got Umbra dropping down the right flank. Then we have a Macus Asp fighting into Brain Eater. What is happening? Oh, yes, the poison on Macus Asp. I'm like, how did he kill the Brain Eater? I know he's got Skirmish, but yeah, I forgot about the poison. And then we got Snecklifter fighting into Mermook to finish him off. Tolas getting a couple amber there for Peyton. But also getting amber for Jeff. Then we got Nexus hitting, so each player gets another one off Tolas. So Peyton not in check, but giving Jeff some amber there. I'm not that's interesting. I'm not sure what he's trying to do there. He's trying to control Jeff's board, I guess, at the cost of Amber. Didn't get himself in check though. And Jeff's going untamed. Takes his archives. And there's a regrowth. Getting an amber. Going to return a creature from his discard pile to his hand. And it's Mermook who gets to be played this turn for sure. Just to be annoying to Peyton here. Just got rid of him. Oh, he's going to play another regrowth. I didn't play the Mermook yet. He's going to go look for that Hunting Witch. Can't find it. <laughs> Just kidding. Grabs the Niffle Ape. Throws him in hand. Let's see. What's he got? Just throws out an Ancient Bear on the left flank. Niffle Ape on the right. Mermook also on the right. And a Fertility Chant. Getting four Amber for Jeff. Two for Peyton. Putting, himself, putting both of them in check, actually. But Jeff ahead, of course, going for his second key. And pops a key charge off. Gets his second key. Fertility Chant with Key Charge. Damn. Damn. It's a nice card to have come with your Key Charge. And boom, just like that. He's working on his third key. Peyton forging his first key here. Yeah, Jeff taking advantage on a non-turn with Lash active, raising key cost by three. Makes sense. So Peyton going dis here. And a key hammer undoes that key that he just forged and gives him six amber back. And it'd be interesting if we can get him off that key by just getting rid of two amber. Tolis is going to reap. And Lash, yeah, he's not going to forge though. That's right. 
That's right, it's a diss turn. He can increase the cost by three, stop him from forging at least next turn. Nice play here by Peyton. He is not out of this game yet. And he doesn't control the weak. He's going to force Jeff into a house here. And he forces Jeff to play Logos. There's a bunch in the discard pile. He hasn't played them in a bit. Wow, he has no Logos. He has to pass. Wow. It's definitely not over for Peyton here. But he's still in check. Wow. I, I didn't expect that. I know lots of Logos is in his discard pile. We know Library Access got purged. You would assume since he's been playing Brobnar and just did Untamed, he would have some Logos, but... Either he's choosing not to play any of it, or he just doesn't have any. But yeah, he passed. He said it was a good call and passed. Wow. It's turned out to be an interesting game. <laughs> yeah, I believe we've seen his library access, Nero Siphon, remote access already, sloppy lab work, at least one or two wild wormholes, bat drone, we've seen brain eater. We've seen quick so so that is what like nine nine or ten of his logos cards already so yeah definitely a good call there i yeah, know we've seen a lot but yeah just looking at his deck list yeah we've seen nine or ten of the cards at least out of 12 only right so that's that's good odds the rest of them are sitting in the deck i guess so peyton now taking his time deciding what to do here on this turn it came back to him pretty fast so i can understand you're behind. Your opponent's in check still for their second key. Do you go dis and kind of lock yourself in there? We see he's got a bunch of Logos cards in hand. But then he allows his opponent to forge. But does he get himself into that check for his second key? He's got to try to do that. you got to try to get that second key. At least push check here. Or else he'll still fall too far behind. He's going to go Logos. Takes his archives. And he's going to do Interdimensional Graft. I mean, he could have lashed there and just done that next turn, I think, might have been might have been the better call, actually. Allows his opponent to pile up with some more Amber. But he's going to use Nova Archaeologist to put a card to his archive from his discard pile. Maybe put a, uh, put a discard in there, like um, Control the Weak, maybe? And he's going to do Lab Work. Archive another card. See if we can see what it is here. No, we're not going to see it. So he's going to phase shift, play an out of action card here. And a shaffles, which is another interesting play. And then a sloppy labyrinth. So he's going to force his opponent to lose. An Amber at the end of his turn, so that means he gets nothing off the Interdimensional Graph, so really just played it for the Amber, but, I mean, he got himself to check, so. Oh, Peyton didn't get himself in check. Yes, the Murmuruk there on the right flank. So he's just sitting at six. And Jeff will reforge that second key. Hmm. I don't know. I might have gone dis there, especially since he could have lashed... Threw down shaffles. I don't know. You increase your opponent's amber and then maybe slap him with the uh, interdimensional graph when it was more juicy. I don't know. So Jeff's going Brobnar here. And Blood Money is going to put two amber from the common supply on an opponent's creature. Throws on Umbra. So Umbra is going to be the next guy he kills, I'm sure, to get that amber. And there's a troll. More big, beefy bodies on the board. And we got a 
Troll doing a reap. A Bumpsy doing a reap. Where's the fight on Umbra? I'm surprised. Or does he have another Earthshaker? Did he get Earthshaker back? Nope, he's doing Relentless Assault. This totally makes sense now. So he's just going to ready up and fight with some of them, I'm sure. But he might just use his uh, untamed creatures. Some of them might be better to fight with. Like Ancient Bear, who's doing Assault here to Umbra. Doesn't even take any damage back because the Assault kills him first. Gets two Amber off that play. And gets a Tolus Amber, too. Oh, he's using Peyton's Tolus against him. It's not looking good for Peyton here. Now we can ignore Elusive and Taunt with that Niffle Ape. He needs to get Shaffles off the board, though, I think. Could also gain some extra amber off... Uh, oh, never mind. That's Bumpsy, not Headhunter. So Troll will take out Shaffles. Gains one off Tolis. Puts himself in check at six. Yes. And who's the third one? He's going to do Bumpsy to get rid of Novu Archaeologist. And gain another amber off Tolis. Yeah, Tolis is a very risky card to play. Especially when your opponent has the untamed... Fighting lineup and Brobnar. So Khalifi Dragon gets in play since he's at seven Amber here. Gross. He just discarded Burn the Stockpile. And wow. We've seen a Khalifi Dragon in the wild here at a top 16 Archon Vulture at Gen Con of all places. Love it. Love it. So that Khalifi Dragon, not one you usually see in competitive play. Cannot be played unless you have 7 or more Amber. Has that Fighter Reap ability. Gain 1 Amber. Then deal 5 damage to a creature. He has 12 power. Look at that board on Jeff's side. What is Peyton going to do to deal with this? He's facing elimination here if he lets Jeff forge a key next turn. He's going to go disc, though he has to. Drops down a Dominator Bobble. Drops down a Dust Imp. And key, another Key Hammer. Oh, he archived it. That's what he grabbed. So he did forge last turn, I believe. So he will be unforging and gaining 6 Amber. Now's when you want to drop that interdimensional graft. <laughs> Damn. Did he buy himself enough time? He needs to get to check. And he's going to reap with Tolis. Oh, he already is in check because the key hammer. And he does the lash to force Jeff to pay a nine for that key. For the third time, pay for that second key. And we have an Arise play on Peyton's side. Who's he going to grab? <laughs> and he's just going to grab Shaffles, the disc creature. The only one he has in the discard pile. Not the biggest Arise we've seen, but it's some Amber control on the board. It's some bodies. He may get stuck in that disc slash of Broken Dreams loop here, so he's got to get as many discards out on the board as he can. But I'm sure Jeff won't let those stick around too long. So there's the chain used up off of Arise. And Jeff forges at 9 Amber for that second key again. And Peyton is in check with looks like 8 Amber. Feel like we may see another Brobnar turn here. Of just using Tolis against Peyton, maybe. Gets rid of some bodies. Gets some Amber on a Brobnar turn. You got the bodies in play. Depends what's in hand, though. It's almost through his deck. Yeah, he's going to go untamed. So he's going to heal up Bumpsy. 
Get the additional amber from the heel. Makes sense. Still has some bodies on the board to fight with, with the Ancient Bear and the Nephilim for sure. So we still can put that Tolis to work. There's a Dust Pixie gaining two amber. Not sure what he just played on the right flank up there. We can't see it on. <laughs> it's off camera, but. I'm sure we'll see it in a minute as he cleans up his line. Or as he readies everything up, I mean. And if a leap into shaffles makes sense, should gain an amber off Tolis. There's a couple reaps. And we have a loss in the woods play here. It's going to do Macus Aspen, Dust Imp, shuffled back into Peyton's deck. He's controlling his board here. And he's going to do Bump Seat. And the Dust Pixie into his now three card deck. Gross. <laughs> And it's another ancient bear that's up there on the right flank. And let's check with... It's like 11. That's going to be game, yeah. Thanks for both players for playing on camera. Good luck to Jeff in the next round. And wow. Uh, I think it came down to uh, Peyton's chances lost there on that whole interdimensional graft. I think you could have used that to better efficiency. Maybe playing it, holding it, doing the lash play. Something. I think there's just something in a different order there. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. We have more Keyforge coming up on the channel. Make sure you subscribe, hit that notification bell. And thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.